Hey guys, it's Sasha. The US inflation data for July has just come out and the annual CPI figure has dropped from 9.1% last month to just 8.5%. The consensus for July was at around 87 to 8.8%, so this was a lot better than expected. And the stock market has absolutely exploded on the news. The S&P 500 was up about 2% in pre-market trading. Gray stocks are booming. Tesla is up almost 5%, despite Elon Musk announcing that he's just sold a boatload of shares to fund his Twitter purchase, but not everything in this report was rosy. It is really, really critical. There are some major lingering issues that I'm going to walk you through and explain that are still in that report that I am still very concerned about. And we are going to enjoy a great market popping champagne kind of day, but I wouldn't be celebrating that inflation is over just yet. You can see in the inflation data that the most obvious drops came in energy. Energy overall is down 4.6%. Energy commodities are down 7.6%. Electricity prices prices still went 1.6% up, but if we zoom out and look at the underlying data, the oil price has been gradually coming down throughout July to the lowest level since Russia invaded Ukraine at the end of February. And in August, the oil price has gone even lower, now trading at about $90 per barrel. This is good news as far as inflation goes, and it points to energy pressures potentially coming off for August's data as well. Gas prices in July mirrored what happened in June, but largely stayed in the same ballpark. But we're seeing a move back down so far in August in relative terms. But if we look at the CPI data more carefully, you will notice that the July 22 figure, the month on month movement is zero. It is a negative. So the unadjusted 12 month figure has dropped from 9.1% to 8.5%. But the seasonally adjusted number, that is the month to month movement, has actually not moved from June. It kind of looks like it's dropped, it looks a lot better, but it isn't. That's just the way that these numbers are measured. So the real problem here is that there is a very real risk that people are celebrating a little too early because all items less food and energy, well, less energy really, actually went up 0.3% in July and sits at 5.9%. There is a drop in used car sales and transportation services. Oh yeah, oh, that's all nice. Although we've seen these dips before and they didn't transpire into long-term trends. But the really big risk for CPI over the next 6, 12, 24 months is down here in shelter. It might not look like much, but shelter has gone up by 0.5% and is now sitting at 5.7%. I have mentioned this as a massive long-term risk to inflation over the next couple of years before, and here it is, coming right through, rearing its ugly head. The Zumper National Report has shown a dip in US prices recently in June and July, but it's a relative drop. The numbers are still very high. It's still setting a 9 to 11% year on year growth. And the problem is that it has been sitting at that level for the last 12 months now. The shelter number that we see in the CPI index is a massively delayed indicator of what's actually happening with the rent and house prices. So whatever is happening with house prices, with the rental prices, typically materializes in that shelter number at some point further down the line. So all of this upward movement in prices that you can see, it was moving up at 10% year on year a year ago, and it's still moving at 10% versus the number that was moving at 10%. That is still all yet to come through in the CPI shelter number. It is not yet being reflected in any meaningful capacity in that CPI data because the CPI figure is still sitting at just 5.7%. And the latest available US home price index data shows that house prices are even worse worse than rent, they've been growing at more like 16 to 17% per year recently. And the St. Louis Fed, although it's a little bit delayed, all transactions, house price index has been exploding in the last few quarters. So one of the problems with this sense of jubilation around the CPI coming down that I'm sure everyone is going to be celebrating is that the shelter part of the index is very likely to continue moving upwards slowly but surely towards something more like 11 or 12% in the next year, maybe even higher. Unless the surveys on which it is based are somehow massaged enough to not show the real increase. I'm sure they're not going to do that. And shelter is one third of the total CPI index. So if shelter goes up 6% from here, which is very likely, uh, that will add 2% to the total CPI figure, even if everything else stays flat. 
At the moment, we still have no certainty as to how the whole Russia-Ukraine situation is going to play out because that is a very big factor in global energy prices. At the moment, it is summer in the United States and in Europe to massive consumers of energy, including Europe consuming energy from Russia. So oil and gas prices are seeing a bit of a respite. But what's going to happen in the winter? Russian gas supplies to Europe are under a massive strain with a war of words over sanctions. Europe is saying they're going to cut all supplies at some point in the future, maybe, probably, maybe not. And the global oil trade has now rerouted supplies so that Europe and the United States can feel better about not buying Russian oil, while Russia just goes and sells its oil to other countries and the Middle East sells less to those countries and more to Europe at much higher prices. It's a zero-sum game. The US Senate has just passed the Inflation Reduction Act, <laughs> interesting name, which has $430 billion worth of provisions for climate change, healthcare, and green initiatives. And there are some lo there is lots of really cool things in there, like subsidies for electric cars, but it's a bill that stimulates spending. It encourages spending. And it's called the Inflation Reduction Act. <laughs> the whole reason the US Fed has been raising rates in basic economics is because higher rates slow down spend. Yesterday, Joe Biden signed the CHIPS Act, which is another $52 billion thrown at US chip manufacturers building foundries in the United States. This is all great for building the industry, general US economic growth in the future, and is going to help companies like AMD that I'm invested in. But it is yet more money being thrown in. And if we look back at the CPI report, the critical items are still looking exceptionally ugly. In fact, they are looking more ugly rather than less ugly this month. Shelter has gone up and will continue going up for the next several months based on all the data that we're seeing. It pretty much can't really stop growing given what's been happening with rent and house prices. Food is still growing at over 1% per month. That is ridiculous. It is now at 10.9% overall and 13.1% for food at home, which is the critical figure for lower paid workers. A drop in energy costs means the overall numbers did come down a bit, but the overall numbers are insane. It is still massively up in terms of how much it costs you to put gas in your car or how much it costs to heat your house. The costs of the lowest paid are increasing sharply and continuing to increase. And this is going to put a lot of pressure on wages, fueling the potentially risky inflation wage spiral. You can see from the Bureau of Labor Statistics that the real average wages are still down 3% year on year. They've been dropping and they've only increased 5.2% in absolute terms compared to 8.5% that the inflation has gone up by. But take that 5.2% increase in wages and then compare it to 13% year on year increase in food prices, 12% increase in rent, and 44% increase in gasoline costs. And you can very quickly see that when you ignore items like buying new clothes or buying new cars, things that do not affect these people in the same way as they might others, you realize that the pressure on wages is much, much, much more significant than it might seem. The Fed schedule is so busy. You know, meeting every six weeks is really hard. It takes a massive toll. Spending two days every six weeks on working is impossibly difficult. So of course, as per usual, they have given themselves a nice big vacation over the summer. So we're going to see the August inflation data before the next Fed meeting on the 20th to the 21st of September. And remember that August data might look about the same as July because those energy prices are continuing to fall and they might mask what's happening with everything else. And so we have this very real risk of the Fed patting itself on the back in September saying that the very small increases in the rate that they've already done have now beaten inflation. Inflation is dead. It has been defeated. Well done to us. And if we then see no increase at all, which is probably unlikely, maybe just a smaller increase while food and shelter are still ramping and the real pressure on those people at lower wages is still going up, we might have some real issues going into the fall when the pressure on heating and energy is going to be a whole lot different. I really hope that isn't the case. I kind of don't want to see a Paul Volcker style 5 or 6% emergency increase in rates in November or December or at some point early next year, but let's see how this inflation story develops. If you found this video useful, please don't forget to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And as always, I'll see you guys later.